In this video we're going to tie a little streamer called the Beathead Light Bright Zonker. It's an easy little zonker uh, pattern to tie and very, very effective. Um, this is actually one of my favorite little streamer patterns. First thing we're going to do is start off with a TMCO streamer hook, either a 5262 or 5263. Then we're going to add a bead to match in gold. And then we're going to take a little lead wire here and I just add a little bit of lead wire to stabilize the bead. Um, it also adds a little bit of weight. Uh, to the fly as well. And then I'm going to make sure I leave about a bead's length of hook shank there for the head of the fly. The bead is somewhat incorporated into the body uh, of this fly. Then I'm going to take some Vivas 6 aught black thread and just lay a quick base down all the way back here to the back of the fly. Then I'm going to take a black rabbit zonker strip and uh, you want to make sure that you clip the end nice and clean there and I kind of taper the little hide piece just kind of bring it to a point and we want it to be longer than the shank of the hook. You want to leave yourself plenty of extra room to work with. Now here we're going to tie this zonker in at the back of the hook here and I'm going to peel back a little bit of the fur. I want to leave about a half to a quarter inch of hide hanging off the back of the fly. And a little trick, you just wet your fingers and pull some of that rabbit hair forward and that'll help create enough separation for you to tie in your rabbit. So I'm just going to peel some of that hair back and I'm going to take it with a nice tight wrap. I usually do about two to three wraps to really secure the end of that hide at the back of the hook. Then I'm going to take my thread forward and lay down a couple more tight wraps to just further secure it in place. And then you can kind of take the rabbit and stroke it all back and it'll all kind of blend in together there. Now we're ready for our body and for that the initial pattern calls for light bright dubbing. Um, you can use that if you have it or you can use a material called ice dub. Very similar types of materials and the first color we're going to use here for the back half of the fly is going to be purple. So you're going to dub a fairly generous body here light bright and ice dub can be kind of difficult to work with. You can use a little bit of wax to kind of help aid in dubbing the material. But really what I found is you just kind of do it in little little stages. So you just work the dubbing onto the thread as you kind of work your way forward. And you kind of want to build up a little bit of a taper. So you'll just kind of make the body larger and larger as you work your way forward. And I, what I kind of do is make a rough dubbing forward and I'll kind of work back and then taper forward at the very end. And some of this is personal preference. Some guys like a nice thin body. Some guys like a nice chunky big purple body. Um, so it's kind of up to you on the looks and how picky the fish are and really just what they're looking for. I usually tend to err on the side of chunky on this fly. I like a nice wide body that tapers forward. And I'm going to taper the body almost all the way forward to the lead. I'm going to go over the lead just a little bit and I'm going to leave about a bead's length of bare lead there for me to put the second color in.
There we are. Now the next color we're going to tie in is going to be some red. It's kind of a little hot spot or a gill spot for a minnow. So I'm just going to do the same thing. Dub a little onto my thread and just build a little hot spot. Kind of blend it into the purple dubbing. You want to make sure that you don't crowd the head of the fly. You don't want to force that bead forward. You want to make sure you still have some room. And then, once you dub the head, I'm just going to push that bead forward and I'm going to jump my thread over the top of the bead. Just like that. I just jump my thread right over the top. Then you can pull the rabbit strip over the top. Making sure that it's nice and centered. I kind of wet my fingers just to keep it all in line. Then you can capture the zonker strip with a couple really nice secure wraps. Trim out the excess. And I'll just take a couple more wraps to really secure it. And then you can finish off the head. For that, I take just a little bit of that purple dubbing. Just enough to kind of coat the thread. And I try to dub this piece really nice and tight. That way, I get a nice tight little ball right up there by the head of the fly. And then you can just whip finish. Add a little zappa gap to the front of the fly. Some guys like to rough up the body and pull out some of those fibers um, so you can take a little A little velcro or a little brush and kind of tease that out if you like. I actually kind of like the looks of it just how it is and uh, very easy fly to tie. has some weight to it. You can sub for a tungsten bead if you want a little bit more weight. Uh, you can tie this in olive, white, black, uh, really any color you want. I'm a big fan of this black and purple combination. It's done real well for me in the past. Uh, but that is the beadhead light bright zonker fly pattern.